right? Do they have the same website more or less for each country or do you think they make some change for the different countries? Did you look at the website for Australia or Malaysia? Is it very similar? Just different language or is it different presentation? It's similar. Similar in English? Yeah. So this kind of square showing all the fashion. Maybe the fashion is that they're promoting. Is it, is it the same fashion in Australia or different fashion in Australia? Similar other side. The clothes is similar here in Australia or Korea? Yeah? Yes. Similar clothes. Maybe a little bit seems to be in Australia, maybe the weather is different, right? The seasons are different. So Korea, they seem to have lighter clothes, a little bit currently. Australia, the heavier clothes. A little bit. So they're using the same kind of design for their website, right? With that kind of square and offering clothes <coughs> like this, right? But they have different languages and different clothes, so slightly different. Okay. Uh, Kim Bong Sok. Yes. What, web, what company did you choose? I choose Apple. Apple. So again, if I search for Apple, I can see the Korean page. It shows me the Korean page automatically. Right. Did you check what countries or its global page? United States. Hmm? United States. Do they have, how many countries do they have? Mm, so many countries, but there is no difference and just uh, very easy to find. So they just have, just, but they have a lot of different languages, right? Mm -hmm. Apple, like Uniqlo maybe had eight, seven or eight languages, right? But Apple has most of the languages in the world, right? Sell, selling in all of these countries. But these countries, they speak the same language, like French, right, or English, but they have, still have a different website, okay, for the country, even though, like, Canada is English, United States is English, they make it slightly, they have a different website for each one. What do you like about the design of the website? First of all, it's very simple and well cut and very good. Not many words. Okay, so you can see these websites, there's a lot of images, right, these days, not that much text. Uh, does Apple sell the same product all over the world? Does Apple sell the same product all over the world? Yes, they standardize the product. Right. Uh, Jay Jin Young, <coughs> what company did you choose? Baum Kakao. Hmm? Baum Kakao. Baum Kakao? Yes. Is that global company or international company? Uh, global company. So what other countries do they have? Uh, they provide uh, Kakao service. So many country users use the. So on their website, how many different languages do they have? Just two, English and Korean. Yes, there is some English. Do you know which countries they are in? I don't know exactly. Right, so why do you like this site? Uh, the design is very simple, and there are some cute, cute. <laughs> Icon mm -hmm. such as uh, right, right image, right to okay. just this page. Well, we can see that in the old days, some key companies they focused a little bit too much just on one language or two languages, but these days, companies are starting to make their uh, websites more customized to the country. Okay. So they have uh, 
different languages, they may have different layout or different product depending on the country. So, then let's move on. Uh, we finished talking about cultural environment, and we're going to start talking about political environment and economic environment. So, Uh, we have economic, political systems and policies which are always changing. There are many different types of economic and political systems in the world. And these systems are important when we're deciding which international markets we're going to pursue. So a very simple example. If we look at economics, right? Let's say we look at GDP per capita. <coughs> so you're deciding to sell some face cream. So which country do you think is better to sell your face cream in? The United States with a high GDP per capita or in Somalia with a low GDP per capita? Which country is going to be better to sell your face cream? The US, right? So that's a very simple example of how a different economic system can affect which international market we are going to enter. Okay? So, <coughs> countries active in tra international trade have an interest in protecting <coughs> political powerful elements in their own economies. So trade policies and economic controls have come into existence, creating tariff and non-tariff barriers to free trade. So, we talk about national champions. Some countries have national champions. For example, GM in the US. Right? So, the companies want to protect their own industry. So, according to the idea of capitalism, GM was a failed company in the US, right? So, they should probably be allowed to fail. And Kia and Hyundai or Toyota may be doing a better business, so they should take over the American car market, right? But the US government stepped in to save GM. Why? Because GM is a national champion in the US. Okay? So we can have politics can be important in business too. We should understand politics. Okay? They wanted to save the jobs in the US. So they can also make trade policy. That's a subsidy. These days, many governments are using subsidies. Do you understand subsidy? Subsidy is giving money or helping the companies, right? We can also use other trade policy, like health and safety regulations. For example, the European car industry might decide to make some new safety regulation, that the door has to be this thick, right? But they, first they check the cars. They see Korean cars' doors are this thick. And European car doors are this thick. So then they make the law. It should be thicker than the Korean car doors, but less thick than the European car doors. So now the Korean companies have to go and change all their tools and change all their factory to change the size of the car door. Okay? So the, the Europeans try to do that to protect their car industry. Okay? So these days, the government policy can be not so obvious. In the old days, they had very obvious one, like tariff. Do you understand tariff? Just put the tax, extra tax. But these days, we have the WTO and many free trade agreements between countries. So the tariff system is not used as much. But we did see a dispute between the US and the EU about bananas, where tariffs came back into play. because. The EU has some colony, used to be the colony of the EU, usually in Africa, where they buy their bananas, right? But the US has many companies. Do you know Chick Tita Bananas? No? It's a US brand. It's from South America. So the bananas from South America is quite curved. But the bananas from Africa is not that curved. So a little bit like the car doors. Europe made some regulation that we, we don't take the curved bananas, okay? We want this kind of banana, right? They made something 
excuse, like it can get damaged easily or that kind of thing, right? So the US wasn't happy about that. So the Chikatita US company wasn't happy. So they lobbied their government. And they told the US government, you have to stop the EU from doing this. So then the US government put the tariff on some EU products in retaliation. Okay? So some EU companies couldn't export their goods to the US because they made some retaliation. So we, if we are in the banana business, then we need to understand about this kind of trade policy and economic controls because it can affect our business. And some European business that was completely unrelated, just the US put a tariff on that business because it's mainly European business and not US business, they got some surprise, right? Suddenly there's a new tariff on me. Why did I get a new tariff? Right? So just the US wanted to retaliate against Europe. Do you understand retaliation? In that case? So the company got affected. So we have agreements like the WTO and other free trade agreements, which is trying to make lower. Uh, of course, a hundred years ago it was much worse, right? Uh, but these days, we try, try to make a lower uh, protectionism between countries. Like, for example, in the Great Depression, a hundred years ago, a lot of countries did protectionism and tariffs and taxes during the Great Depression in the 1930s. That was one of the causes of the World War II, because of the bad feeling between the countries. Okay? So this time, after the financial crisis, the countries decided, we're not going to do any tariffs, we're going to cooperate. Okay? But even though the companies cooperate more these days, we can still have some issues and problems. Also recently with Russia, with the problem with the Ukraine, the EU put some tariffs on the Russian goods, and Russia put some tariffs on the EU goods, in quotas. So, <clears throat> we have some other political causes of instability. Some forms of government might be unstable. Uh, we can change the political parties very often. Some countries like Italy, right, even Greece, they often change the political party. <clears throat> It means the government doesn't get to finish their five years. They finish after one year or two years or changes a lot. Okay? In South America, we often have that case too. If the political party changes suddenly, we can have a, a change in <coughs> regulation. Okay? So we saw in Greece, the political party changed from the right side to the left side. Okay? Then the left side decide to make stronger negotiation with the EU. And then also they decide to allow in a lot of migrants into the EU. Because Greece is blocking a lot of the migrants coming to the EU. But they changed their government, much more open policy towards the migrants. They stopped blocking the migrants, right? Then the migrants can pass easily into Europe. Okay? So the government change, then there can be some big change in the economy or change in for the companies. Uh, we can have nationalism of countries. So we saw some nationalism in Asia between Japan and China. They had some dispute about some islands and some fishing boats. And some Chinese people boycott the Japanese product. Okay? They don't buy the Japanese product. Or even sometimes they attack the factory, cause the factory to be closed down. Japanese factory in China. Okay? That was a couple of years ago. So we can have nationalism can affect the companies. Like we said, animosity targeted towards specific countries. Trade disputes. Countries get involved in trade disputes like the EU and, and the US or Russia and the EU. So all of this causes instability. Do you understand instability? Do companies like instability or don't like instability? They don't like Companies want a stable situation, right? The worst case, we don't see much these days, but we can see confiscation. Let's say in countries like Bolivia or Venezuela, we just take the company's asset and we don't pay any money. Expropriation, the government seizes the investment but makes some reimbursement for the assets. So for example, in Venezuela, 
they just took back the oil, right? Some foreign oil company was there taking the oil, and the government just said, we're taking back the oil, it's ours now, right? You go away. Here's some money, right? Not enough money, but some money. So expropriation. Domestication, uh, the government wants the foreign investment to be under national control, okay? So they mandate their ownership. So we look at an example of domestication on the next slide. So the nationalization of Air India. Often industries the government can nationalize is some transport industry or telecommunications industry, something which is important for the infrastructure in the country. So Tata was a private company which owned and operated Air India and India Airlines until they were nationalized by the Indian government against Tata's wishes. So the new government in India, they said, we want to run the airline. Okay, the government wants to own the airline, so we're taking the airline, buying the airline, against your wishes. Okay, so that can happen. <clears throat> we can have political and social activists outside of the government. So this can interrupt trade. So for example, some people want to bring about peaceful change, they do some demonstration. Other people have violence and terrorism to affect change. Okay? So for example, the economy and the industry in Greece was affected because people were <coughs> making demonstrations. Okay? On other cases, we see in Europe at the moment, there is some terrorism. Okay? The stock of the travel company is going down. Okay? Travel company is affected because there is some terrorism there. Customers can just do some boycott. We mentioned before about Nestle, who had the baby milk formula in Africa. Okay, people didn't like that. Nestle was pushing the baby milk formula, and that children and babies were getting sick because the water was dirty. So they decided to do some boycott. Do you understand boycott? Boycott of Nestle products. <coughs> Don't buy. They agree not to buy. Okay. So. We already mentioned in the Middle East, they might not buy the US cola, they don't buy Coca-Cola. Okay? So the internet has become a, a useful tool of political and social activists to spread the word. So these days on Facebook and Twitter or other social media, it's easy for people to organize some boycott or <coughs> demonstration. So the company has to be careful, right? If they do something bad, then they, it can be found out and the word can be spread and they can be affected. So, these days we have cyber terrorism. <coughs> so in Korea, some of the banks were attacked a couple of years ago. Shinan Bank, some banks, internet way. Who do you think was attacking South Korean banks? North Korea, are you sure? But North Korea says no, it wasn't us. You don't believe them? No? Okay. So, uh, we can see that we, it's a big issue, right? We also saw the Sony. Who do you think attacked Sony when Sony made some movie about North Korea? Did you watch the movie Sony made about North Korea? Was it funny? Kim Jong-un wasn't happy about the movie, so what happened to Sony? They didn't release the movie in the US, right? They just released on the internet. Because they well, were afraid of some terrorist attack, and also they were had some cyber attack. Okay? So they released some emails on <coughs> Embarrass Some of the Stars. <coughs> so we can... It's hard to determine if a cyber attack has been launched by a rogue state, by a terrorist, or just by a hacker. It's hard to know where it came from. But cyber attacks can happen these days. Do you know Anonymous? Have you heard of Anonymous? Anonymous is like vigilante group. They aim to, if somebody or something does something wrong, they find the information or attack them. So they can, they can use viruses. Okay. Uh, we can damage just a company, an entire industry, or even a company's infrastructure. Okay. So, 
This is getting more common, so business leaders and government officials even talked about this at the Group of Eight, the G8 conference. Non-governmental agencies, uh, they can affect the policy decision by protests and lobbying. So we have these kind of agencies, they can lobby the government. <coughs> Please change the law. Okay? For example, about the environment. They lobby the government. Don't allow the company to use coal anymore. Do you understand coal? So the electricity company shouldn't use coal anymore. They should use another way to get the energy. Let's make a new regulation. Okay. So of course the electricity company's profits can be affected in that case. So uh, one way the companies can deal with this is by working together with the NGO. Right? Working together with the NGO instead of the company lobbying the government and the NGO <coughs> lobbying the government. Right? company and the NGO can work together and then they can agree on something and make a proposal to the government together about policy. Okay, so we have Red Cross, Amnesty, Oxfam, UNICEF, these kind of companies. We have violence and terrorism, uh, mainly terrorism is getting more of an issue these days. We saw recently the attack in Brussels. So tourism and international education are two industries that have been affected by terrorism. So whenever there's a terrorist attack, we always see the stock price goes down after that. Travel companies like hotels, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, we saw the Sudanese terrorists attacking ships. Nowadays the ships have to take a longer route to avoid some terrorist attack. <coughs> We can have politically sensitive products. So a politically sensitive product is a product which affects the environment, exchange rates, national security, and the welfare of people. They can be subject to public debate. So we talked about genetically modified products. Or health. Okay? So the European Union has banned hormone-treated beef for more than a decade. Do you understand hormone? They give the beef hormone, like in the US, then it's bigger, or you can get more. But in the EU, they don't like this. So, public concern can also affect the company if it's in the health area. <coughs> so, today, because we're using the computer room, we're going to do some activity, the computer activity. Skip down here first, right? So the talk, we're going to talk about the economic environment for a country. So just go down to the slide 35 on the PPT and just open these links, these web pages. We're going to look at these web pages. So just if you open up the screen like this, full screen, then you can just click on the link like that. Otherwise, you can copy and paste. Okay. So go to the slide. If, you don't, if you're not following on your computer, go to the website and download polit Political, Legal, Economic Environment PPT. Then on the PPT, go down to slide 35. Slide 35, and then open up to the full screen, and then just click on each of these links. Okay? And it takes a minute for the takes a minute for the links to open up. So these are just some web pages that we can use for analyzing the economic environment in the country. Looking at the economic environment, political environment. If you want, you can just type them in either Nation Master, type into Google, Trading Economics, type into Google, right. EIU Risk Analysis, CIA World Factbook, and type in. So 
So we're going to do these tasks using these internet resources. Right, I'll explain it to them a little bit. What country has a high enrollment in tertiary education, third level education? Find the GB GDP per capita of Malaysia. And make a short report on the political and economic risk for any country based on the EIU data, the EIU report. So let's look at the website. So the first one we looked at here is the uh, Nation Master. So Nation Master has a lot of statistics about different things. Okay? We can find out about the different areas here. You go down to tables, graphs, maps, and pie charts. Category, agriculture, conflict, cost of living, crime, culture. For example, we click on crime. Okay. Statistic, we can have <laughs> crime, uh, burglary. Do you understand burglary? Right. Burglaries. And then we get the amount of burglaries. And it tells us, uh, the nice thing about this website is that it tells us at the bottom, it explains about the numbers. What does it mean? So if we scroll down on Nation Master to the bottom, right, we can see here. Where did they get the numbers? European Institution for Crime Prevention and Control. International Statistics and Crime and justice. Okay, then we can also have a look at the map. Okay, and it has some here it's explanation. Okay, Israel is first for burglary among high income countries, right? The years. Denmark in the European Union. Okay. Some interesting fact. Okay, so we can just look a lot look at the different countries. So that's just one factor. So Nation Master we can just check anything, right? This is the most popular one. Type of government we talked about, right? What type of government do countries have? How much are countries spending on their military? How big are countries? And GDP, okay? So you could use this for finding the first question. Finding the GDP of a country, like Malaysia. Uh, we could also use this one for finding out about, uh, let's say, education, right? Third level education education, adult literacy rate, how many people can read, okay? Education and enrollment, sec primary, here is tertiary level, okay? Tertiary level per capita. Do you understand this? Education and enrollment by level, tertiary level per capita. So which countries have a high how much are the government spending on education? Right? What kind of company might be interested in that information? What kind of company would be interested in how much money the government is spending on education and how, how many people have a third level degree in the country? What kind of company would be interested in that information? Hmm? Technology. You're selling some high tech technology. Maybe people need a high level of education to understand how to use the program, the software or the technology. Okay. If we are looking for graduates, right? We, let's say we're the technology company, we're looking for skilled graduates. Okay? We want to go to a country which has a high level of people who graduated from university. They may have a better workforce, okay? or skilled human resources. So we can find a lot of information here. We can use these also when we're doing our final project. Okay? We need to check about the culture, we need to check about the economy and the political risk in the country. Here we have trading economics. Trading economics just puts together a lot of economic data. We talked about economics, the GDP, interest rates, inflation, jobless, jobless rate, unemployment rate. Okay? Uh, we can check by country, we can check the different uh, factors. <coughs> So, here we have markets, interest rate on government bonds, stock markets, commodities, governments, taxes, 
GDP, I love GDP data, labor, unemployment rates, productivity, right? If we're going to look for workers, do we want to go to a country with more productive workers or less productive workers? More productive workers, right? The salary might be lower, we can check. In some countries, the labor cost might be lower. But productivity might also be low, okay? So, wage growth, right? Retirement age, wages in manufacturing, consumer, consumer spending, disposable personal income. Is that important for companies to know? Disposable income means at the end of the month, how much money do you have left? How much money is disposable for you to spend, okay? Companies with higher disposable income may have more money to spend on our products. Okay? Uh, prices, business confidence. Okay? So there's, this is all economic data. Just I use this website because it's just presented in an easy way. Okay? You can check on any of the economic data and you can check it, compare countries against different countries. The Economist Intelligence Unit. So we need to uh, check about the risk here. We can check, we can click on country. So The Economist, you know The Economist magazine? This intelligence unit talks about the... We can give us information about the country, like we can click on Argentina, first one, right? Tells us about what's happening in the country, the policy, the government, the business environment. Okay? Some, some uh, articles The Economist has about Argentina. Articles it has related to Argentina. It has here politics. Right? Forecast on the politics. Economy. Forecast. Long-term outlook. This means that we need to pay money to Diamond. Okay? So this is the one we're going to use to make a report on a country. Do you understand? Short report on the economic and political risk in the country. We're going to use this. Right? Uh, you need to sign in or register. Do you understand register? The information is free, but you need to register with the Economist magazine, just register, and then you can see, but you can't see this one, but you can see this one. <coughs> okay? So you can look at some analysis of, uh, sometimes they have some countries which they have, all the information is free, just as an example. You can find that that's a useful one to use, right? So we can look across these things, politics, economy, risk, credit risk, do you understand credit risk? Credit risk means can the company pay, country pay back the money that it got? Okay, so I need to log in here. So I'm not going to log in now, but you can get in there and have a look at it. Okay, the CIA has World Factbook. Okay, World Factbook tells us about all the countries. Okay, compares the countries. You can often hear about here. We can find out about gift giving and cultural things also. So we can, you know, check any country, like North America, okay, United States. <coughs> so it tells us about the geography, the people and the society, the government, the economy. It tells us about the economy in the U.S. Okay, so we can also use this one if we like for making the economy report. Okay, transnational issues, any issues it has with other countries. Energy. So here we see a lot of information about uh, different countries. We can use all this information when we're doing our final uh, report and presentation. Okay. So, do you have any question about these websites? The last one down here is the country notebook. So the country notebook is we're going to talk about now for the last few minutes, the final assignment. And we can see the country notebook here next to the final assignment, okay? So the country notebook is helping us to do our final assignment. So this is the final assignment. So we have to make a strategic marketing plan for selling a product in another country. We're going to have three members on one team, okay? So please post on the class notice board your group mem member names, product, and country. Okay. If you haven't posted, uh, 
let's say by next week, you will be assigned a team, a product, and a country randomly. Okay? Each country or product can be used by only one group, the first group to post. So if one group posts on the notice board, they're doing the United States, then you can't do the United States. Okay? Do you understand? So the paper content is introduction, cultural analysis, economic analysis, competitive, this is what we're studying at the moment, right? Competitive market analysis, marketing plan, most important is marketing plan and conclusion. Okay? So we'll, as we study the course, through the course, we'll be able to study these things more, right? But at the moment, you will be able to get started on these two things, okay? If you want to get started on your final one. So we can use the format provided in the Country Notebook resource. So this is what we're looking at here, the Country Notebook resource. So uh, <coughs> we can go to the link. It's a Country Notebook writing guide. And we get this PDF file, okay? Helps us with cultural analysis, economic analysis, market and competitive market analysis and marketing plan. So just for today we're going to look at just the cultural analysis and economic analysis. So it asks a lot of questions here, like we study in the culture. Right? What are the social institutions like? Right? What is the geography like? What is the education like? What is the political system like? Legal system. Okay? Living conditions, language, economic analysis, things like Age of population. Okay. Do we have an older population, younger population? Family income. Okay. Transport, communication systems, working conditions, industries, foreign investment, trade statistics. You don't have to do all of these things, right? Labor force, size, labor costs, development in science and technology. Okay. Media. So these are the things that we're going to consider. So the point is, it depends on your product the product you choose, which of this, this information is, is important for your product, okay? For example, if I chose I'm selling ladies face cream, I may be worried about uh, ages and sex of the population. Do we have many women in the right age group for buying face, group, face cream in that country? And what, what percentage of women? Do those women have spending money? Okay, are they working? Are the women working or are they the husbands are working, right? So what percentage of the women are working? Are there many single women, right? Maybe the single women may spend more money on, on beauty products, okay? So it depends on the... You have to look at those things for the products that you choose, okay? So uh, you can choose a company that already exists, but it shouldn't be in the country already, right? Or you can just choose a company, let's say, a Korean company that didn't expand yet to another country. Or you can just imagine a company. You can make up your own company. Do you understand? So it's quite wide, right? You can make up that you have a Korean company which sells this product and you want to go to that country. <coughs> so uh, then uh, you need to make this kind of report following this. This paper is 20%. Okay, you need to email this.